What's up guys, it's Dark Arm Duel Stunt Tickerney doing a Master Duel Red Dragon Archfiend deck profile. So I'm really excited to do this one for you guys because we just got some amazing support for Red Dragon Archfiend released on Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, taking this deck to a whole new level. So without further ado guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell there so you can come for our notification squad, and definitely check the Patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards. Again, your name, description, every single video, getting assigned cards in the mail, and even getting to request a deck profile every single month to your Patreon. So without further ado, let's get straight on into this. So first off, we're going to be playing three copies of Soul Resonator. This card is an amazing three out of the deck that is probably the best card in the entire main deck because it starts all of your plays with the ability that if this card is normal or special summon, you can add a level four or lower fiend type monster from your deck to your hand, which is a crazy powerful effect for this card to have to instantly get to your copy of Bone Arch Fiend so we can go full combo. This card also has the ability of a card you control would be destroyed by a card effect while you control Red Dragon Archfiend or a Synchro Monster that mentions it, you can banish this card from your grave instead, giving you a little bit of protection. We then play two copies of Vision Resonator. Vision Resonator is an amazing two of in the build, and if you have a level five or higher dark monster on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add a spell or trap that mentions Red Dragon Archfiend from your deck to your hand, which is a really powerful effect to be able to search out cards like Crimson Gaia or Red Zone. We then play two copies copies of Synchron Resonator. Synchron Resonator is really good because it is a level one, helping us go in for a bunch of cool synchro plays. And also has the ability that if a Synchron monster is on your side of the field, you can special summon this card from your hand. That's a really cool effect that if you just control a synchro monster, you can instantly summon this card out to your side of the field. And if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target a Resonator monster in your graveyard, accept a copy of your Synchron Resonator and add it to your hand, which is a really cool effect to be able to recycle your resources. We then play a single copy of Crimson Resonator. You only really need a single copy of this card for combo, but it's a really good one out in the deck because it has the ability to control no monsters. You can special summon this card from your hand. And if there's the only other monster that you control is exactly one Dark Dragon Synchro monster, you can special summon it to two Resonator monsters from your hand or deck to your side of the field, except Crimson Resonator, which is going to help you going for a lot of different Synchro plays, which is amazing. We then play three copies of Bone Arch Fiend. Bone Bone Archfiend is definitely a 3 out of the deck and probably the best card to search off your copy of your Soul Resonator with the ability that if this card's in your hand or grave, you can send one other card from your hand or field to the graveyard to special summon this card. And it also has the ability you can target one other face on Monster Control that has a level, send a Fiend Tuner from your hand or deck to the graveyard, and if you do, increase or decrease that monster's level by one. This card is an amazing combo piece in the deck because basically what you do with this card is you normally summon out Soul Resonator searching out this card, summon this card by sending a card to the graveyard, and then use this card's ability to reduce your copy of Soul Resonator down to a level 2, and then use its ability to send Crimson Resonator to the graveyard so you have it in the graveyard so when you go in for Red Rising Dragon, you can bring back Crimson Resonator back to your side of the field off your copy of Red Rising Dragon's ability, and then swarm the board Resonators and climb into a bunch of different Synchro plays, which is just amazing to be able to do with these cards. We then play a single copy of Wandering King Wild Whim. This card is an amazing extender in the deck. And if you control a fiend type tuner with 15 or less attack, you can special summon this card from your hand, which is a great ability. And also during your main phase, except turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can manage this card from the grave and add a fiend type tuner with 1500 or less attack from your deck to your hand, which is a really cool ability to search out cards like Soul Resonator to get the exact card that you need to keep going for combos. We then play a single copy of Uvaloop. Uvaloop is just really good as a one of in the deck. It helps out a lot to be able to play this card as an extender and helps you go in for a bunch of different synchro plays. We then play three copies of Earthbound Prisoner Stone Sweeper. Stone Sweeper is really cool and was also released in the most recent selection pack alongside all the Red Dragon Archfiend cards. And this card's only effect that we use on this is you can discard this card to add a level three or lower Fiend Tuner from your deck to your hand, meaning this card is a Rota for the deck, which is absolutely insane. You never summon this card out to your side of the field. You're just using this card as a Rota to be able to discard it and search out your copy of Soul Resonator. We then play three copies of Maxi. Maxi is still at three in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, which is why we play this card at three. It's absolutely broken and a definite three of the deck. 
We can play three copies of Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom is definitely a three of just to stop your opponent from touching the deck. We also played two copies of Effect Veiler just to stop your opponent's monster effects. And then finally we play a single copy of Nibiru for the monsters. Nibiru is just a good one of in this build because we are playing Cross at Designator just for the chance to be able to stop Nibiru. But it's also a really good one of just in case you need it. So that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get in to the spells. So for the spells, we're going to start with a single copy of Foolish Burial. Foolish Burial is a great one over the deck to be able to send the exact card you need to the graveyard. We can play a single copy of Pot of Prosperity. This card is currently in one and Master Duel, which is why we just play a single copy in the deck for consistency to dig into the deck for the exact cards that we need. We can play a single copy of Crossout Designator. This card is really good as a one of just to stop hand traps that our opponent might use against us. We then play two copies of Called by the Grave for the exact same reason just to make sure that we don't get hand trap or going in for all of our plays this is a really good two of in the deck and it just helps out a lot overall in this build to stop your opponent from hand trapping you while you're going in for all of your plays we then play three copies of resonator call resonator call is really cool as a three of because this card is basically rota for resonators which is just really nice because you really want to get to your copy of soul resonator as quickly as possible we then play three copies of crimson gaia crimson gaia is such a powerful three we have in the deck with a really cool ability that during your main phase you can add a red dragon archfiend or one card that mentions it from your deck or graveyard to your hand except a copy of crimson gaia and when your red dragon archfiend declares an attack you can change all of monsters that your opponent controls to face down defense system and if a monster on the field is destroyed by battle or by card effect you can special summon a red dragon archfiend from your graveyard which is an insane ability just to instantly swarm the board with red dragon archfiends so that's it for the spells, guys. Let's get in to the traps. So for the traps, we're just going to be playing a few traps, and that's going to start off with a single copy of Red Zone. Red Zone's really good as a one-up, because when your opponent activates a card or effect while you control Red Dragon Archfiend or a Synchro Monster that mentions it, you can target one card in the field and destroy it. You can also target one of your banished Dark Dragon Synchro Monsters and Special Summon it to your side of the field, but you can only use each effect of Red Zone once per turn. We then play three copies of Infinite Impermanence. Infinite Impermanence is definitely a three of in the deck just to stop your opponent's monster effects while you're going in for all of your plays. You can also set this card to your side of the field and lock down entire columns of spells and traps which is really nice but this card is just really good to combo with all of our other hand traps we're playing in the deck so that's it for the main deck guys let's get in to the extra deck so for the extra deck we're going to start with a single copy of scar red Dragon Archfiend. This card is definitely a one of in the build, and this card is a really good stepping stone to help us get out a bunch of different synchro monsters out on our side of the field. This card's name becomes Red Dragon Archfiend while in the field or in the graveyard, and if this card is sent from the monsters under the graveyard, you can special summon a Red Dragon Archfiend from your extra, and it's treated as a synchro summon. Then, if this card was sent to the graveyard as a synchro material for a Dark Dragon synchro monster, you can destroy all attack position monsters that your opponent controls, which is a crazy powerful effect to help us not only get a red dragon archfiend on our side of the field but also synchro climb into other plays while also destroying our opponent's monsters so we can go in for game we then play a single copy of the classic red dragon archfiend you really only need a single copy of this card in the build because you're going to summon off your copy of scar red dragon archfiend but it's still really good as a one of in the deck we then play a single copy of Red Supernova Dragon. Red Supernova Dragon is our main boss monster that we synchro summon into all the time in this build. And has a really cool ability that must first be synchro summoned and it gains 500 attack for each tuner in your graveyard. And cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. And once per turn, when your opponent's monster activates its effect or when opponent's monster declares an attack, quick effect, you can activate this effect to banish this card and also banish all cards that your opponent controls. And once per turn, during your next end phase, or during, yeah, during your next end phase, after this card was banished by its own effect you special summon this banished card to your side of the field which is insane because when you synchro summon into this card you're gonna have to use three tuners to make this card so it's gonna come out with 5500 attack points which is crazy this card comes out absolutely massive it's just a really good otk piece and board wipe 
We then play a single copy of Dispatter. Dispatter is really good because this card is basically a walking negate and it's really good to recover your banished cards. We play a single copy of Bane. Bane's also really good as a one of in the deck because you can tribute a monster and then target a red dragon arching monster in your graveyard and special summon it to your side of the field, which is just an amazing ability just to instantly get your cards back on your side of the field. We then play a single copy of Baron de Fleur. Baron is just really good as a one of in the deck because this card is a walking negate. It doesn't come up all the time because some Sometimes you will lock yourself into dark dragons or into dark, but this card is still really good in the deck overall, just in case you can make it. We then play two copies of Abyss. Abyss is crazy powerful in the deck, because this card is a walking negate in the deck. And it's just a really good card overall, because it has the ability during either player's turn, you can target a face of card your opponent controls and negate its effects until the end of the turn, meaning this card can negate anything, which is really amazing. We then play a single copy of Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. This card is a board wipe and definitely a one of in the build and becomes Red Dragon Archfiend while in the field or in the graveyard. And once per turn, you can destroy as many special summon monsters, effect monsters, on the field as possible with attack less than or equal this card may basically 3000 and then inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent for each destroyed and it's a crazy powerful effect because basically it's just going to destroy your opponent's monsters because all of our dragon monsters usually have 3000 or more attack we then play a single copy of Void Ogre. Void Ogre is just really good because this card is a spell trap negate if we don't have any cards in our hand. One copy of Dark End Dragon. Dark End Dragon is a really good option because it has to be once per turn. You can have this card lose 500 attack and defense points to send a monster opponent controls to the graveyard, non-targeting, which is a really powerful ability. We play a single copy of Ancient Pixie Dragon because this card is just a really good Dark Dragon Synchro monster that we can make. And after resolving a field spell card that was activated during your turn, you get to draw a card, which is a great ability. And also once per turn, you can try to face up attack, which is a monster on the field and destroy that target. But there must be a face up field spell on the field to activate and resolve this effect. We then play three copies of Red Rising Dragon. Red Rising Dragon is very important to the deck as a three of and a card you're always going to be single summoning into first with your copy of Soul Resonator and Bone Archfiend using Bone Archfiend's ability to reduce your copy of Soul Resonator down to a level 2. But this card is the ability when this card is Synchro Summon, you get to target a Resonator monster in your graveyard and special summon it, which is usually going to be Crimson Resonator that you send to the graveyard off the ability of Bone Archfiend. But this card is a really powerful effect also that during your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the grave, you manage to carve from the grave and then target a level 1 or target 2 level 1 Resonator monsters in the graveyard and special some of them both which is a really cool ability just to be able to bring back monsters to your side of the field so that's it for the deck guys i hope you enjoyed this deck is absolutely crazy now that we have all the support for red dragon arch Fiend, it's super fun to be able to play i absolutely love a red dragon arch Fiend because it's such a cool deck and it's just a really fun deck to be able to play on Yu-Gi-Oh! master duel so that's gonna do for this one guys don't forget to like comment subscribe Hit the bell in there so you can come part of the notification squad and we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later guys!